Thank you. Toda. I'm here today bearing in my heart the heavy feelings of pain and mourning. As a representative of the families of those killed, missing, and abducted from Saturday, Simchat Torah, October 7th, 2023. We are all one family, and each one have a story, and Ophirs represent 1,500 souls, four of them in our small family, Bila, Neta, Nitzan, and Ophir. On Saturday morning, he received a message at around 6.30 a.m. The terrorist has broken into the kibbutz. They arrived via surfboard, and Ophir took the gun and ran into the armory. He managed to take the long weapon and run back to the break-in site, encountering a large number of terrorists who came in front of him in vans. He managed to shoot at them, and when he encountered a stopper, they fired a large amount of fire at him, killing him. My brother of fear was the first faculty whose name was published. The terrorist continued towards his mother-in-law, Bila, and murdered her when she went out to get her phone from her electric car. Her husband, Amos, saw what had happened from the window of the kitchen and called his son, Ori, to come. But Ayelet, his wife, who was dressed, immediately ran into the house and saw that Bila has been murdered. The team from the Shah Negev Council called Ophir, the head of the council, and when he didn't respond, they asked Vered, his wife, and Aviv, his son, to go outside under fire and check why. Ophir hadn't moved from the spot for a few minutes, so Aviv went looking for him and discovered that his father, Ophir Liebstein, had been killed in battle and found him under the olive tree next to the house. Aviv took Ophir's weapon and returned to the safe room together with Vered and his brothers, Idan and Uri. And he wrote to me, Doron, I love you. Daddy was killed. Let everybody know. From there, the terrorists moved to the area of the young housing complex and turned it into their control center. They aimed their fire at 20 years old who lived along in small apartments, a living room and a bedroom that is also the safe room. They fired in all directions, threw grenades, used heavy weapons, and destroyed most of the neighborhood and houses. When they arrived to the house of Neta, the nephew of Vered, Ophir's wife, the son of Ayelet and Ori, they opened the safe room door and threw grenades into the room. The Neta shows supreme heroism. He shouted grenade and jumped on it, saving his fiancée life since she was hiding under the bed and she stayed under the bed behind his body for four and a half hours until the army managed to rescue her. During all this time, Ophir's second son, Nitzan, who lives in the young people residence, corresponded with Vered and with his mother and Aviv, his brother, and with family and friends. Nitzan was alone. He hears the terrorists and shot, and he is afraid he will enter, they will enter his apartment. He is aware of everything that happened outside, knows about his father's death, and begs for rescue. At 11.30, terrorists enter his apartment and shot at the safe room door. He holds it and stubbornly, and they can't, so they can count can't penetrate it, but one of the bullets hits him in a thigh, injuring him. While he's bleeding, 
he makes himself uh, stopping the bleeding and talk to his cousin, a doctor, receiving a medical guidance. At 2.45 p.m., any contact with him stop. And only at 4 p.m., we were informed by an elite unit, Duvdevan, that they had entered his apartment and killed four terrorists in the living room. One soldier died, one soldier was injured, and Itzan was not in the bedroom. He's gone. We didn't know what happened to him until Thursday, two weeks later. The day after Ophir funeral, we received the terrible news that he, too, had been killed and was the fourth in our family. Vered, his mother says, he was a better version of his father Ophir. Ophir always said that 95% of the time in the kibbutz, Faraza was heaven, and 5% hell. And he experienced, and we experienced, 25 years in which we celebrated holidays with him on the kibbutz every year with complete confidence. Not even once we had a red alert, red color alert. He was the heart of our family and always will be. People at his council and all over the world cry when they talk about him. His friends in the kibbutz are his big family and the pain is unimaginable. Ophir was a man of action, of a vision, of entrepreneurship. He made friends with everyone he knew and everyone he met him from Israel and around the world and succeeded in bringing delegations of people, even from Gaza, to his house in order to connect them to Israel. Ophir worked from the heart, turned every person into a friend, into a partner, and always with a smile. He raised funds for the establishment of industrial zones the Arazim Center for 10,000 employees and had countless peace projects. Ophir was practical inspiration and visionary behind several transformative projects in Israel, one of them that every Israeli knows as Red South, the Roma Dome, is the Winter Red Flowers Festival that brought hundreds of thousands of people from all over the country to enjoy the beautiful view of the Western Negev. Jewish communities in the diaspora were close to Ophir's heart. He devoted himself not only to serving his local community, but also worked tirelessly to bridge between Israel and the Jewish small communities abroad. Ophir was the chairman of the Habonim Dror and Wikibutz, with leadership programs such as Netaim, Hallelujah, and fulfillment programs like Hamsa and Ulpan Kibbutz that have impacted so many people around the world. Ophir's connection with the diaspora didn't stop there. He understood that maintaining relationship with our siblings and cousins overseas is important for the well-being of the Jewish people. Ophir frequently collaborated with AJC as recently as September 7, 2023, one month before he was killed. Ophir wanted to carry the message of hope and bring the spirit of entrepreneurship worldwide. He believed that through interpersonal connections and diplomacy, he could contribute to Israel and to the resident of the region. As part of this, he led the sister city agreement with San Diego, California, and become friends with Mayor Todd Gloria. Mayor Todd visited Shara Negev and Ophir with AJC, and the two become close friends. So close that when, he, when we opened Ophir's phone after he was killed, one of the first messages checking he's okay was from Mayor Todd. This shows what true, real friendship is. Ophir's touched so many hearts and contributed greatly to the well-being of so many people. In the past, he was the CEO of the Kibbutz's Industries, a member of the board of directors of the Jewish National Funds, 
the World Zionist Congress, Chairman of Kibbutz Cholit, Sapir College, and so many. Ophir is no longer with us in the body. However, his soul will continue to be with us. His vision of connecting people in doing good for our country and for the whole world will be his legacy. Ophir was a bridge builder. He was a connector. The relationship between Israel and the diaspora and between Jews and non-Jews were a key importance for him. Today, AJC is giving the first Ophir Liebstein Award for bridge building, an award which celebrates life and relationship and demonstrates the power of love, trust, and collaboration. Thank you for honoring my brother's memory and legacy. We will never forget the courage, outstanding achievement, and noble qualities of Ophir. Ophir was a man of action, of entrepreneurship, of innovation. His leadership is like his name, O for optimistic, F for friendship, I for integrity, and R for resilience. Ophir, you probably listen now. You fell in a battle, but your idea, your vision, your love, they are still alive and breathing in each of us. You have fallen, but your legacy lives on. You and your soul continue to guide us, to give us strength. Please join me in continuing the project he led and create a new network of global Jewish leaders, bringing together the young leaders that will change Israel and contribute for the better world. Thank you, and Am Israel Chai. Am Israel Chai. Am Israel Chai.